I'm Mark Gordon. I've been practicing um, anti-aging medicine for about 12 years, and <clears throat> over the course of uh, 12 years, it's been one heck of an educational uh, roller coaster ride. Um, information has changed so rapidly uh, that I try to keep my slides up to date so that the information as it occurs and has been duplicated in having more than one just article, more just more than just one article, so it gives some credibility to the information. Uh, hopefully these slides will help to convey <clears throat> some of those issues of uh, being um, credible. So without any further ado, I'll just move on. This uh, presentation is on testosterone growth hormone and DHEA. Yes, it does have some of the other components in it, pregnenolone and so forth, because as you've been hearing me, ad nauseum, and Ginger works for that, is that the um, hormones work best when they're all replaced at the same time. There are other theories that you introduce them one at a time, one at a time. Patients want to have a response, and the best way to get that response is to give them the hormones all together because they work not as islands in the sun, but they all work synergistically or harmoniously, some of the terms in symphony. Our goal is in extending, as Dr. Klatt said this morning, to live to 100 years of age, to improve the quality. I'd rather live to, you know, 99, knowing that I'm able to uh, be erect and to do activities that I want to do. You can take it any way you want. It's important when we see the patients, which as you learn, just doing correct uh, subjective inventories, it'll give you enough information so you can start playing this game with yourself of, I anticipate they're being deficient in testosterone, growth hormone, or what have you. By doing a comprehensive uh, array of pretreatment questionnaires and checking for psychological, psychosocial aspects to them because that's testosterone, DHEA, estradiol, estrogen dominance, uh, progesterone deficiency. So just by these subjective uh, inventories, you can start making definition of what the patient is anticipated or the lab results that are anticipated. And to uh, assess traumatic brain injury, as you heard yesterday, the day before, and every time I speak, I bring it up because it's, as I feel, the key factor to hormonal deficiencies in anyone that we see, other than obvious astrocytomas or radiation or what have you. Laboratory assessment is extremely important. Comprehensively doing a hormone assessment, aside from the visual cues, will give you an entire picture of what's going on. Uh, over 12 years, developed a, a panel which are interactive, meaning that each one of these um, indicated uh, tests can be related to two or more other tests. So it gives you greater information. The whole is greater than any individual one. And an example being, as I spoke about yesterday, IGF-1 binding protein 3 and IGF-1 and estradiol. There is an interrelationship between those three. In the female panel, the same thing. And interpretation of laboratory results. You know, we have this great goalpost. If you like football, wonderful. But for hormone assessments, when you get a, a line being drawn at 15 or 20 and the range is 10 to 90, where does that, what does that mean? What does that truly mean? What we try to do is bring all the hormones to levels that are 50 to 75% of the ideal range, which is the physiological range, and that's based upon uh, age of 25 to 35. I mean, how many people at the age of 40 want to have hormone levels of a 90-year-old? Or being 90, not wishing their hormone levels with that of a 25-year-old? Hormone deficiencies and their cause, taking into account what causes the hormone deficiencies. Article that came out, this was uh, <clears throat> an um, adolescent uh, pediatrician or adolescent physician who could not understand why he was seeing so many cases of idiopathic uh, hypopituitarism, which was a recurrent theme in his practice. And he went back and he looked at the perinatal records and he found that almost everybody had a insult, a perinatal insult that led to traumatic brain injury. 
in hormone deficiency. And in articles uh, shows in three months, 56% uh, hormone deficiency, pan hypopituitarism, and after 12 months, there's 36%. And yesterday, there was another article that came out where they qualified it as to mild, moderate, and severe traumatic brain injury. And five years later, they saw that 37% had uh, pan hypopituitarism in mild, and 56 in moderate, and 59 in um, severe which lets us know the margin of difference between moderate and severe it means that all you need is moderate to get the overwhelming amount of hormone deficiency lasting beyond five years. Once you get it, you got it. So it means that we have to supplement uh, hormones. Medication, statin drugs, if they interrupt cholesterol production, all your hormones downstream are interrupted and you become deficient. And when the body is deficient in downstream hormones, signaling happens to the liver to increase cholesterol. So those of you who have used statin drugs for a long period of time, you might have one or two patients, if not more, who you've treated with a starting dose of statins and initially lowers the cholesterol level, and then boom, it jumps up. It's the body fighting back, trying to do its natural positive feedback, negative feedback, to get what it's missing. X-rays, radiation, uh, low-dose radiation affects the hypothalamus, um, which is the regulatory mechanism that senses what's going on in the blood in order to send a signal to the anterior pituitary. Low-dose radiation, dental x-rays, head x-rays, um, CT scans of the head will leave the anterior, spare the anterior pituitary and damage the regulatory mechanism. So you have, in a challenge test, the ability to produce growth hormone, but you don't because the regulatory, the realistic or the real regulatory mechanism isn't the IV with the, the arginine or the uh, growth hormone releasing hormone or the clonidine. It's the hypothalamus. It's not working. The system's entirely broke or broken. Frailty syndrome uh, may represent the, or probably does represent the end results of a number of lifelong insults to the pituitary or the hypothalamic pituitary axis. And that could be TBI, radiation, chemotherapy, surgical trauma. Uh, I was asked by an anesthesiologist about people who post-op have a uh, uh, decrease in cognitive ability. And that's probably due to the effect of anesthesia on the hypothalamus. Uh, medication, and there's one missing, um, radiation, chemotherapy, surgery. Oh, if you have a stroke, a stroke can trigger the chemical mechanism based upon cap spaces leading to damage to the cerebral tissue around the hypothalamus and termination of its function. Cholesterol, as I said, the father of all hormones. Oops. Back up. Uh, cholesterol, as you see at the very top in the cascade, all are hormones follow cholesterol. So we can't, with impunity any longer, hand out statin drugs because you'll make the reason for you to use testosterone. That's what you want to do? Fine. Pregnenolone, the mother of all hormones. And as you know, a father and a mother, you got the children. And all the children are the hormones that follow. Pregnenolone, the mother of the children. Precursor to DHE produced in the adrenal and the brain, so it's a neural hormone. And it can raise downstream hormones, as I said, neurosteroid for peak brain functioning. It also helps to protect the brain from traumas. Studies that have been done on women who were taking HRT versus women who were not taking HRT, when they both had uh, strokes, the ones that were on HRT did better, less swelling from pregnenolone. Also, it increases adenocyclase, which deals with memory engrams. Regulates calcium flow, which deal with electrical charges. Associated when it's reduced, reduction in, uh, when it's adequate, reduction in pain. So if you have a deficiency, you have a hypersensitivity, whining, greater energy, enhanced strength and mobility, can improve osteoarthritis. Now the question is, in the parentheses, is it directly the effect, direct effect of pregnenolone, or is it a combination of pregnenolone and DHEA, or is it DHEA? 